Thank you. Uh, yes, I will be talking about deep learning methods for extracting hydrography from the interferometric synthetic aperture radar data. That provides us with radar intensity and five meter elevation models for all of Alaska. Over in the upper right there, you can see our study area, which has which encompasses about 12,000 square kilometers. Um, transfer learning is based upon the idea that, or the concept that when you train a neural network model, you, the, the basic knowledge is learned in the initial layers or the earlier layers and the detailed information is learned in the later layers. So if you tra train a model, you can transfer it to another area by freezing the earlier layers or some selected layers then adding some additional training, training data from the transfer area and uh, training the model by freezing, oh I said we freeze those layers, and then, then you train it and then you unfreeze all the layers and reduce your learning rate and retrain it re to refine those, the information, that, the detail information to that, those training data. So the basic idea there is you're gonna be able to Re largely reduce the amount of training data and processing time that you need to uh, uh, to predict features from for larger areas. And so we're using this method. We've got a 50 watershed area in Alaska that's on the left hand side there that we're using for a base model in our target area. We've got a 73 watershed area. The reference data is used for um, training and testing. It's compiled by contractors. They use flow routing techniques to uh, extract the hydro hydrography from the five meter elevation models. And they adjusted it, manually adjusted it to uh, high resolution satellite imagery. We're using the UNET model uh, to extract the hydrography from several layers of IFSAR derived data. Um, and this for the base model area, you can see on the right hand side where um, the best model we came up with was had, we trained it with 12 watersheds that are distributed throughout the 50, or, uh, 50 watershed area. Um, the results on the, over there on the left hand side, you can see the F1 scores for the training data is about 77 and for the test watersheds it was about 73%. We did filter the reference data because um, we use the shallow water channel depth model because we weren't certain how, how accurate it is. Uh, but in, in this case, we had to re uh, filter about a half a percent of the pixels and which in also included about 1.4% 1 1 of the water pixels. And by doing that, you, you set the, 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 the filtered pixels to null and you don't use them in training and you also, well, recompute mask F1 scores. And by recomputing those, those F1 scores, are, are, they increase by seven to eight percent. And you can see the predictions on the lower right. They uh, work well. And in the left panel are the predictions. You, they work well for the water body features, the larger features, and the detailed network features are not well connected and they're, they're not well predicted. The reference data is on the right hand side there. To transfer the model to the tr uh, target area, we used w uh, between one and four watersheds, and and then we also froze all of the layers in one case, except for the classification layers, and then we we also froze the, the uh, only the encoder layers in another method. Um, and these results on the left hand side show that I'm showing you the base base model. We took the base model and we used it to predict. Uh, over the 73 watersheds and the average F1 scores were 57 and 74 for unfiltered and filtered. When we used our best transfer learning model, which used three of the watersheds for training, um, we basically it didn't improve the model at all. But in this case, that target area we were using had, we had to filter at about twice as much as, tw twice the number of pixels we filtered and about six times the number of water pixels. So we think that that was hindering our ability to do the transfer learning it didn't improve the, and the model in that area was not predicting as well although if you look at the results in the low in the right and the lower panel it's water bodies are being predicted fairly well 
and the network features are not so well. Uh, so this is just initial work that we're doing and we've got quite a bit of additional work to test additional methods for possibly using different models. We used the UNET model in this case, deep convolutional neural network, but we can use other models and we've got other data areas that we can work on too where we have likely have better reference data. Thank you. Thank you.